good morning on my behalf as well. And thank you, Nebahat. I think that, you know, that set the ground for my presentation, which is going to focus a little bit more on practical communications matters as I started my career as a teacher. <laughs> so, so can't get rid of that. Uh, so very important in my mind is that you have the strategy, uh, as we talked just recently in the previous presentation, and that you have your business plans. But it's, it's equally important to position yourself in the world uh, and, and in the eyes of pe people so that they know you. So I'm going to talk about sust sustainability as a cornerstone of reputation building. And first, I'd like you to think about a company that has a really bad reputation. If you were here, I would ask you to name those companies. But now I just sort of wanted you to think about this matter. And what happened is that in most of the cases, these companies did something wrong. And they didn't communicate about them, uh, themselves before their, their bad actions. So they failed in sustainability. And that's a very bad position to be in because it takes years to rebuild then the reputation. Um, I think that we have a great example, unfortunately, here in Finland recently, Vastamo, for example. Nobody knew about the company before. Suddenly they were in the headlines and then suddenly they went bankrupt. And that bankruptcy shows that reputation truly matters. What about company with no reputation? I, I mean, you are still doing okay. Uh, you are executing all the ESGs and reporting and, and, and you think you are doing okay. That's good, of course, but you are still in the dangerous position because that's a position where you can start building your reputation, on the other hand, and head towards something great. But you're also in a position that if something bad happens, so a small hiccup in your process, something like that, so suddenly you are in the club of bad companies with bad reputations. So it's a ticking time bomb and you need to fix it by communicating. And then there are companies that we all love. I mean, we know that they have their faults and we know that occasionally there are small hiccups and, and so on. But we sort of trust that these companies do deliver and that they fix things, that they aim for good, they want to do something good. Uh, and if something sort of negative happens, they will sort out the things. And it is always in these difficult times when companies sort of integrity is measured. You have to handle those well. Um, one company that I very deeply loved was Nokia and still, of course, is. And I always thought that the mission that we had uh, connecting people was something bigger and, and therefore it connected people because it told that our aim was to bring wealth and prosperity to different countries, make people more connected and more empowered. And it was a great mission in my mind. And yes, I mean, there were certainly many hiccups, but many of us still have sort of warm feelings towards Nokia. So in that, case, in that sense, I think it's a great example about company that you can love. Today, I mean, we all love what says chocolates and Marimekko dresses and, and, and so on. There are plenty of good examples in our domestic fields as well. So you have to build your reputation. And while you build it, you also have to measure it. And reputation can be measured. And I have borrowed here a chart from T-Media, which is one of these measuring companies in Finland. And many companies use them to measure their reputation. Uh, these figures here are just illustrative. I've taken it uh, from their website and they don't tell anything. But this sort of goes through the uh, elements of reputation. So the company, of course, needs to have good governance. That's sort of the skeleton of the company that makes your integrity to stand out. So you know how you perform, what are the processes, and how the company works. And you follow those rules. 
responsibility as an item is one of the eight core elements uh, of the reputation as well. So what do we do on the responsibility side and how do we talk about it and, and so on. Workplace, what kind of employer you are, is also very important. And I claim that if you are not responsible, you have to pay more to get good people and you have still very difficult to get those in the company because they keep asking, why would I join? The only mission to join, of course, is to improve the reputation of the company then and make the company better from inside. Um, but not every person is interested in, in that one. They just say, no, I go to the companies that already have a good reputation. So this is very important to pay attention to. Product and services are also very important. So you need to have good products and services that are built in a sustainable way. And then, of course, you need to build a great brand. Ansi Vanyoki, who we'll talk a little bit later on, is one of the great brand builders. And I do remember that in very early, in 1980s, we did a survey about different company brands in Germany because Nokia at that time was a very small one, uh, a very small company. Uh, and we wanted to know how it was positioned versus others. Um, and by the way, three persons at that time knew the name and they thought, some of them knew, knew, thought that we were making cameras, so they mixed us with Nikon. But that was not the point, because there was another company who many people knew but its reputation was not that good. It was sort of like, okay, because people said that, you know, ah, yeah, I mean, their products are something that everybody uses, but nobody wants to have. And then you don't get premium for your, uh, your product, premium price. So your reputation can impact on your pricing as well. Financial performance, Neb had already talked about uh, sustainability having impact on the price of the money. So what kind of loans you can get. And I recently read that if insurance company here in Finland in the future is going to price even insurances based on how sustainable you are, because the risk for the insurance company is higher if you are not sustainable. And I thought that, well, great move here as well. Uh, so Sustainability impacts almost on everything. And obviously, the buck stops at the leadership. The leadership really needs to believe in sustainability, execute sustainability strategies, make uh, sustainability as part of the whole company action, and they need to communicate about sustainability matters as well in a credible way so that you know that the speaks Speech, her speech comes from heart. Innovations are very important. Um, Fortum has great examples on, on what kind of innovations they have in the energy field, but there are many other great examples uh, in, in Finland as well. Uh, Vaisala, I think, for example, is geared for uh, climate change solution applications and so on, because climate already is a big part of their business. But we all, in different companies, can innovate and be more sustainable. And last but not least is dialogue. And I didn't uh, color this blue uh, button here. Uh, it was colored by T-Media. But I do believe that dialogue is very important. Because if the company is not known, if it doesn't openly discuss about good things, and things that still need improvement in their companies. So if the company closes, so nobody will know what your values are, what your targets are, and that will impact on your reputation. Just think about Finnish companies. There are many companies who are very actively discussing, and then there are some who think that, well, I mean, we, we still have so much to do, and we, maybe we could start communicating later on and, and so on. But I say that the time to communicate is always now. You need to communicate the steps that you are stay, uh, taking, what are your challenges and how you are going to solve them and how you move them forward. 
Well, this all takes time. You, pay, you don't pay, build reputation in a day or two. It's not credible. You can try it, and many companies have tried to rebuild their reputation suddenly. But it's a constant gradual work. And in my mind, sustainability work and reputation building is based on company values. You have to decide what you stand for. And that's sort of like the how part of the company. And then there's the what part of the company, which is the strategy. So the concrete actions that you're going to take to achieve your business targets. And the business targets are set in that way that they are so feeding in, into your sustainability strategy. And these two together then have a major impact on your corporate culture, which is sort of like the clue in the company in that way that you don't need to micromanage people and, and set sort of mini targets to them, but people automatically will follow when they know the big direction, they know that they are empowered to act, and then they will deliver great results as well. And transparency in this work is very important, both internally and, in exter and, and uh, externally as well. And this internal part is very important. I started from external communications, but later on I've learned that you always, in a company, have to start from internal communications. Because you need to get your people on board. They need to be believers until, uh, 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 before you can get anybody else to become a believer. So it creates a solid ground for the whole company to communicate and not just certain individuals who are nominated to be spokespersons. So for me, every company representative, every employee is a spokesperson as well. And it means that they need to know what the company is heading to. And by and large, they need to buy the values and strategies of the company. Obviously, we have a little bit different opinions and we uh, occasionally disagree and, and so on. But by and large, you have to agree with the company uh, habitus and value because otherwise you cannot be a credible uh, employee ambassador. And sustainability cannot be an isolated department somewhere with their isolated messages and actions. But it needs to be visible, not only in all communications actions, uh, as I've written here, but in all corporate action. So all employees need to think that how does this sort of advance our sustainability uh, mission if we do this and that and, and so on. What is also very important is that you have to make choices, and that's always the toughest part in personal life or then in, in corporate life. So you need to decide what is your focus uh, in, in your activities. In many companies, of course, especially in big companies, you have hundreds of sustainability activities going on. Well, when you start to communicate, you need to think what is relevant for a certain audience and what is relevant for the whole company. Uh, and then you focus on tho those. And yes, you do disappoint many of your colleagues when you say to them that, no, we cannot do this now. We need to focus on these three or four topics. We'll come back to those later on. Or that we will never come back in the big picture to those. But you can talk about those matters to your particular target groups. And communicating the progress, stepwise progress, is very important. We Finns are such that we would like everything to be perfect before we start communicating. Uh, and we always are so modest. I mean, this is not really yet ready and, and so on. But the key, key thing is that you communicate that you are taking action, you have targets, and you are on your way to reaching them. And therefore, you, you sort of communicate that you are an active player in the sustainability field. So, what should you do? My advice is that make your company visible. Uh, sustainability, but also communications, should be on agenda on every company. 
And we should not build this sustainability bubble where we sort of are hyping ourselves, but we should make sustainability key part of everything as we, uh, that we do, as I told earlier on. And we should be open to challenges. I mean, there are many target groups that will challenge us. They don't agree with our strategy, with our targets and, and so on. And we should discuss with these target groups and, and learn from them. And we might even occasionally change our opinion. And we certainly need to learn from our failures. I mean, we've paid for the course, so we should learn from it as well and take further action then. So, so and, and this I, I think is the great thing in failures, that you always learn something new and next time you will perform better. And like I said, we don't agree. We have different opinions. There are many uh, so, sort of organizations who are very far-reaching in their sustainability uh, lobbying and, and, and so on. And, and they certainly don't agree with us for their own reasons. And, and we have to accept that and we have to discuss, but we also have to defend our view. So, so we need to explain why did we choose in this way if you think like that. But we can disagree in a friendly way and, and try to explain where we come from. And then when we make sustainability choices and also communication choices, we need to be courageous. I mean, those steps that when we take them might feel a little bit fearful. So, so when we then look back, we think, what were we fearing at? You know, we succeeded, or if we didn't, we, we anyway learned something. And, and that's very important. So always be brave, move forward. So what did I do? <laughs> there are also challenges, as you saw, I can clearly not handle the buttons. And, and that's how it is also in the real life. You cannot always master everything. Uh, and, and, and then you need to think, how do you tackle those challenges? And one thing certainly is that sustainability changes over time. Just yesterday, somebody posted me a picture about uh, Telefax saying that, hey, can you imagine this ancient device? Uh, my kids don't know what it is and, and, and so on. And the, I then answered that when I started the work, Telex was still something that was required by the Helsinki Stock Exchange. I started in 86. And it's the same thing in sustainability. What was sustainable in 86 when I started would not be acceptable at all today. All these, you know, men, women, inclusiveness things, uh, the ways to do trade with Soviet Union, uh, sauna evenings where women went to sauna, uh, men went to sauna, women were waiting for them so that the dinner could start and, 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 and so on. So, so Nothing of that would now be acceptable. Uh, but at that time, it felt quite okay. It's, you know, you didn't even question it. Uh, and we need to have finger on the balls and see how the society changes and be a little bit ahead and start doing changes before they are actually required. Because the legal requirements will follow or then the societal requirements, people's so, sort of attitudes will change so that you will have to change. And you don't want to be a laggard, you want to be a front runner. I already mentioned that sustainability means different things to different people. And we have to accept this. And now I need to actually look at my, my uh, papers because I thought that one good example is Elon Koryu. I don't think that we all agree what they are doing. Um, Extinction Rebellion Finland was the name in English, uh, this action group. But I do think that they make us think and they challenge us and, and they make us sharpen our own opinions. And it could be that we fine tune something even if we don't agree with them. And I think we should not only tolerate these groups, 
but we need to welcome them because they anyway take the discussion forward and take the society forward. Legislation in my mind lags always behind. Corporate world is faster and, and that's good. But it also then means that sometimes you actually need to adjust when the law finally comes. The things that you've done are maybe not quite uh, what the law will then be and you have to change uh, and you have to accept this. But you should not wait the legislation, you should st just start going like Ture said earlier on, now it's time to act. Uh, and in uh, Talos Element just two weeks ago, I think, Kai Oistan was saying that he has a feeling that the corporate world is already, and this was uh, after the IPCC report, that the corporate world is already moving fast and they are in many things, not in all things, but in many things in, uh, ahead of uh, governments. And I think that we should maintain that position. We need to be front runners. Then one challenge can be who defines what is the corporate view. Uh, this might not be so familiar to Nepahat, but uh, others know the company called Kärkkäinen. So just recently, their owner uh, sent a note to all employees saying that um, uh, it's a retail shop. Uh, employees saying that you should not get vaccinated and uh, he's, he's very anti-vaccination. Uh, he was very anti-vaccination in his statement. But, but then the company Kärkkäinen came out with the message and said that, you know, this statement does not represent our views. And uh, how credible is it then afterwards? So we really need to agree beforehand who makes the statements and what kind of statements do we make and what kind of impact they can have then on your business. I thought it was a great communications example and I will save it in my files. And change takes time and that's simply something that we have to adapt to. Very key thing is then, uh, and this is closely linked to reporting, how do we measure sustainability and how do we set the targets? How can we find things that are measurables? Because fine talks and communications, it's, it's all fine, but to communicate you need to have facts to support you, otherwise it's just fluffy talk and I'm not for that. I represent that type of communications where everything starts from value, strategy, facts and measurements and, and then you create the communications message based on, on that. And here, of course, now that we have this new business, we can help you. To summarize, in my mind, sustainability is part of the corporate soul because that's how I started my corporate life. Uh, so it needs to be internalized so that you don't need even you don't even need to think what you do you you just sort of act and you know that this is according to the corporate values and this is not according to the corporate values you always target to build long-term success it's so easy to be fascinated with quick things but they can backfire so you always have to think about next steps as well and then it means that progress will happen in baby steps. But babies learn to walk, they learn to run, and they can even become athletes. And our target as corporation, of course, is to become an athlete who can really run. And we need to recognize challenges. Uh, so, so, of course, we need to be optimistic, but we also need to think about the challenges and we need to be prepared for those. And then, like this T-Media example showed, we can measure our reputation progress and take action. So one example from my previous employer, Finner, when I started there 10 years ago, it was a really difficult period because the aviation had been sort of liberalized, there was competition and so on, and the whole industry had to move. So lots of strikes, lots of bad media and, and, and so on. But what we then did was that we decided that we will do things together 
and we will start to build new kind of thinner. And based on the measurements, we got significantly up. We are not at five, which is the maximum. We were not there, but we were a good sort of in top 20 company already. But it took like 10 years and the whole thinner personnel to work on that. But that was the secret. We, I think that we got all thinner people behind that target. It's also very important that when you get, make these baby steps, that you celebrate the success. It is so empowering and it gives so much sort of satisfaction to people when you celebrate the successes and it gives you energy to go forward. And then you need to be true to yourself. There are other companies with different strategies. You can of course learn from them, but you need to think whether the same things would fit in your company. And in that way, you then decide what is me, what is this company and what kind of image do we have and what kind of image do we want to have. And then we need a management commitment to head towards that reputation and that image. Thank you. This concludes my uh, lesson today. <laughs>